Hey folks, I'm Rev Becker. Today we're going to go through how to install a Bafang mid-mount motor. This is a crank drive, so the motor will be turning the chain. Uh, it will replace the whole bottom bracket, so we'll take the old bottom bracket out, put the new one in, attach the chain ring, the cranks, and this motor will be driving the chain. So we may hit a challenge or two, that'll be fun. Let's go. Uh, a dyno bike. Uh, we're going to start by taking the cranks off. There's a lot of different um, types of bottom brackets and cranks. Um, so this is the crank here. The crank bolt that I'm undoing here is uh, one slightly unusual type to get this uh, sort of holotech bottom bracket out. So once we've got that part out we need the crank extractor. Um, sometimes you need this little part on it, sometimes you don't. For this particular type we do. In terms of getting your cranks off, I would recommend you watch a video on your particular type of bottom bracket and crank, as this video is very specific to this particular bottom bracket setup. All right, so once we've actually got this uh, crank extractor in here, this is the case for most cranks, we actually need to wind the outer part of the crank extractor in. And effectively what this does is push this bolt against the bottom bracket and therefore draws the crank off. Okay, there we go. Second part is pulling the cavity the bottom bracket, unwinding this plastic cap, which is on the uh, non-drive side. So this is just a cap that holds the bottom bracket in from coming straight out. We need to undo the other side. I'm just going to turn the bike around for a second. Okay, so I've turned the bike around. We're going to work on the drive side now. So again, I just need to undo this crank bolt. And I did cheat and uh, actually loosen that with the bike on the ground. It's much easier to get some good purchase on these bolts. Pop the crank extractor in again. All right, so we're left with the chain, which obviously we're going to use. We still need to extract this bottom bracket. So again, we've got this, uh, this tool here. The tricky thing here at this point is that on the drive side, these bottom bracket cartridges unwind in a clockwise direction. So they've got a reverse thread. Okay, so just while it's floppy on the stand, it's really difficult to undo something that's quite tight like this is. So I'm just going to put the bike onto the ground. Okay, there we go. So, presuming your bottom bracket is similar to this, this is the way most of them come out of threaded BSA or JIS bottom bracket cavities. All right, so there's the bottom bracket cartridge that we no longer need. There's a fair bit of dirt and grime in there, so obviously we'll clean that up. So what we're going to do next is prepare the bottom bracket and we're going to prepare the motor. Okay, so fitting the chain ring onto the motor. The motor comes with a standard, this is a 46 tooth chain ring. Um, it's designed to give you the optimal sort of range from torque to speed. Uh, it's designed to pop straight onto the side of the motor here. And you can see that it dishes inwards a little bit. All of these are quite pointy though. The other option is to go for a lecky bling ring. This is an upgrade uh, which helps you actually be able to differentiate between a, a wide and a narrow tooth pattern. So these are actually designed to hold the chain better and they've actually got a bit more of a dish to them. So in their, in their height, We'll pop the bling ring on. 
it's important to get the right chain ring on before we fit the motor because we need to make sure that the that the ring is clearing the chain stay we don't want to have the unfortunate experience of the chain ring grinding away on the chain stay okay so that's all in place that's ready to go into the bike now okay so i've cleaned out this bottom bracket cavity what we're aiming to do is to put this bottom bracket of the motor through the cavity first hurdle we hit is this cable router underneath here so what we're going to have to do is remove this this is too deep here the channel that's carrying that cable so I'm gonna to have to remove that and this will be the case on some bikes not all bikes um, the channel that is deep is the one that we actually do need to retain uh, the cable that we do need to retain we don't need to necessarily have it in such a deep channel but this is for the rear derailleur so we do need to have that cable channeled but this uh, the fact that it's so deep is something we need to change I'll just take it off uh, and we can have a look at what we will do so we have these two cables this one which we're not going to need um, because we're taking this front derailleur off we're only going to have a single chain ring on the motor but this rear derailleur we do need this cable so the first thing we're going to be doing is actually um, we'll have to slice this part of this cable router off and we'll try to use the slimline part um, one thing that's important to note at this stage is if you're putting a gear sensor on good idea to actually thread it on because we're going to have to disconnect this um, this rear derailleur cable while we're doing that we may as well actually slip the gear sensor in which you can find in another YouTube video by Rev Bikes. Just cutting those ferrules off so we can actually thread thread these cables. So this one we don't need to use. This one we do need to use. How can we use this? Can we put it around the other way so we can still use this shallow channel? Well, first thing, we're actually going to cut that, that part off and then do some improvising. So I've just trimmed that bulky part off and trimmed one of the arms down here. So we can mount this now upside down. All right, so that looks nice now to carry this, uh, this cable here underneath the motor. Before I actually thread this through, the sensible thing would be to do the gear sensor, as I said earlier. Let's try again. We'll try putting this motor through here now. Like a glove. All right, so the motor is in. We have to keep in mind that in its final position, it's going to be bracing up this way so that it can't turn any further when it's under torque. So we will want to have uh, some spaces in here as well to make sure that doesn't crush the cable. All right, I'm going to turn the bike around so we can now work on securing the uh, locking system. Okay, the next part is putting this fixing plate onto the outside of the bottom bracket there. It's important to note that uh, this will sit flush if the, if the bottom bracket cavity is a 68 mil. These, can all, these motors can also be used with a 73 mil bottom bracket, but the gap in here, you will need to space out with some washers. All right, important is that these little raised parts are actually going towards the frame. These are gonna bite into the frame and make sure the motor can't turn. So essentially mounting like that, we've got these two longer bolts, came in the same bag as the little ones for the chain ring. do these up sort of 
finger tight. You want this to be straight. At this stage, the motor can still turn, as you can see. The two locking rings that are going to hold the motor nice and tight are these two. This one goes on the inside and you can see it's got sort of square shaped um, divots so you can actually tighten that up. This one goes on the outside to just lock them in together so they can't move. So before we do this we actually want to put some Loctite on the thread. We do not want this to loosen at all or come undone. Um, before I do that I actually want to locate the position of the motor so that it's got in some cases it can be braced right up against the frame there in other cases that will cause friction to this cable running under here in this case it will cause friction so I'm going to just get a little rubber chock to place under here you want something very firm not something that's going to compress in this case here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> tiny little bit of rubber it's just going to create the little gap we want it's going to slip straight out in between the motor and the frame all right then we want some loctite now for this one i use the blue loctite it's really good and strong that's going to be right up in there and this is going to secure your motor to the bike Make sure this has, this has a curved side and a flat side. Obviously the flat side needs to go onto the, the inside, the flat part of the bike. This super handy tool is uh, the perfect one designed to go with both of these, both of these parts. So we're going to want to get our motor in place using that rubber chock. Perfect. And then we give it plenty with this. If you don't have one of these tools, of course you can improvise. This one wants to be really tight. This is what's preventing your motor from getting loose and slapping all about. So I usually give it as much as I can. Obviously if the bike's on the ground as well, you've got more leverage. I don't mind to give it a couple of taps with the mallet. All right, there is a torque rating on this. 50 to 60 Newton meters, I think. So make sure this is nice and firm. Double check that you've put the teeth biting into the frame and that's good to go. This outer cap is probably best not to have Loctite on it. It's very thin aluminium. So you do want to be able to undo this. Essentially this locks on to create a binding effect with the first locking ring. 20 to 30, 25 to 30 Newton meters of torque on this one. And the final thing is just firming up these bolts here, keeping that locking plate tight. Okay, so that's the main part of the job done. The motor is in, we wanna put the cranks on and the pedals. Okay, so we have the cranks we're going to wanna to put onto the motor now. And here's also the pedals, which have been removed from the existing um, cranks. Putting the cranks on is pretty easy. These bolts already have a bit of Loctite in them. If you do find yourself undoing these for some reason and doing them up again, I suggest putting some more Loctite on them. So this one wants a fair amount of force to actually pull the crank onto the square taper. 
as much as naturally possible okay and then the pedal goes on so one thing you'll notice about pedals is that when you're trying to do this one up on the left hand side you're trying to do it up in a clockwise direction that's incorrect so on the left hand side the pedal actually does up in the reverse direction all right so that applies when you're taking the pedals off as well so just remember the left hand side the pedal is reverse thread on the right hand side or the chain side the bottom bracket is the reverse thread All right. Okay, so on the other side, we do the same thing with the crank. We make sure that the crank is facing the opposite way to the other side. Obviously, we don't want both the pedals to be going at the same time, bunny style. Ugh. Again, this is one of those jobs, getting it really firm is best done on the ground. This has already got some grease on. If it didn't, I would be putting some more grease on here just because it makes it much easier to come off later. <sighs> if it ever should need to come off. Some people tell us they think they're going to take the motor off once their fitness has improved. <laughs> Never seen it happen yet. Okay, so we've got our cranks on. The last thing to do is just to remove this derailleur. Um, got a bolt over the other side. So that's going to come off there. And then we just need to uh, free the chain. So we've got a little Phillips head in here. Undo that little bolt so we can open this cage. Don't need that anymore. We can thread the chain onto the chain ring. Paying attention that the wide part of the chain is on those large square parts of the lecky bling ring the chain won't go on otherwise anyway okay there we have it we've got uh, one functional mid-mount motor uh, there are of course sometimes the need to improvise if you come up against anything you're unsure of or need some help with do feel free to give us a call uh, there is um, quite a lot of variation between different bikes. If you do have a, a, an obscure bottom bracket, do check with us before taking on this, this job to make sure that it is compatible. Uh, essentially 90% of bikes are compatible with this setup. Um, this is a thousand watt motor, but the same principles all apply for the 250, 500 or 750 watt versions. And uh, yeah, the other parts of this job such as the speedo sensor, the gear sensor, the brake sensor, the throttle, the um, digital display are all available on other videos on the Rev YouTube channel. If you do require a toolkit you can order one from the Rev website for this specific installation. I've been Rev Becker, thanks for watching.